to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. Today, my guest is Christine Vroom. Christine is the founder of Christine Vroom Interiors in Los Angeles, California, where she creates livable luxury through well-designed spaces that directly enhance mental health along with physical and spiritual well-being. When Christine filled out her intake form on the show, she indicated that she wanted to talk about designing a dream team. And that is a had me at hello topic. And on her intake form, Christine noted noted that over the years of building her business, it was exhausting to rely solely on herself. It created exhaustion and burnout. And these are what forced her to see that she did need people to stand by her side in different capacities, working in their superpowers so that she can work in hers. Now, that sounds like a great show. I'm like, yes, hit accept pitch on that one. However, as you probably really have heard me say it over and over again, before we hit record, I have a little warm up chat with my guest. And often I'll say to them, I've read your intake form. I'm on board with all of it. But in your own words now, just describe to me what you think the through line of today's conversation will be. And that is when this took a turn, when I asked Christine that question. So here we go. It's an honest, straight talk about mental health. If you were at Luann Live 2023, just past November, you know we talked about health and wealth, and we did not shy away from the mental health aspect. And this is a regular part of our conversation around here because it impacts our businesses. Our health, our mental and physical health, both play a role in our businesses. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Finances are important. Systems and process are important. Teams are important. But we have lots of conversations and opportunities to take care of those aspects in our business and less for this aspect. All right. So I think it's important that you take care of yourself from the inside out. Your business is your utopia. And in order to take care of it, you must take care of you. Christine has put a lot of time, thought, and effort into finding the best ways to take care of herself so that she can show up as a better business owner. It's a journey. It's always changing. And today, she is sharing her story and some of the wisdom that she's learned along the way. Let me introduce you to Christine. Hey, Christine, thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Hi, how are you? I'm good. And I have to tell you something. I'm excited about this conversation because here's the thing. You have come to this pre-air conversation with two tidbits for me that have got me jacked up. One tidbit is that you are originally from Jersey. So yeah, right there, right? You're East Coast girl. This is it. Um, And secondly, you followed it up with a lot of times I will, you guys all fill out an intake form and I read it. But a lot of times I will ask you, rather than discuss the intake form, if you could think of your own through line for this show that we're about to record, what would you want it to be? And guys listening, here's what Christine said. She goes, you know, Luann, I'm just sick and tired of the conversations that have to do with nothing. She goes, when there's so many things that happen to us as business owners, like trying to be creative when we're going through things that are difficult. And she said, and I just would like to have a real conversation. And I'm like, well, you have come to the right place, Christine, because that's what I'm all about. And so the thing is, is that you're saying it from a very serious place. 
and from a serious desire to actually be able to have a place to talk about the things. Yes, we need to know our money. We need to know our numbers. We need to know our process. But there is also this element of taking care of the CEO and what happens in the doing of that day to day in our business. So talk to me, Christine. What do you want to say? How do you want to start this conversation? Where do you want to take this? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's so many places I could start. I mean, just the topic of mental health and and just this all-encompassing view of, of getting it kind of out in the open. I just, I feel like in the industry, because we're so creative, we have all these special traits that make us creative, you know, that I feel like as a, as a whole, we're very like a a driven type of, of people and um, passionate people and artistic. And we have all these amazing traits and yet we're also human and we have real life situations and we have hardships, not only in our business, but in our personal life, we have our own mental health crisis. We have depression, anxiety, bipolar, there's all these other things that we're dealing with, but yet we show up to the table and we, and we really do we try to do our best. And so I'd almost like to start just by, just by bringing awareness to the fact that I think we should have more open conversations about this in general. You know, I was, I was even at a, a, um, a design show and, and I was on a panel that I loved and, but I feel like the real, the real conversation is in the depths of, of us. And so I just kind of like to talk a little bit more about that today. Well, I appreciate that. You know, what's interesting is as we're recording this, we're about a month outside of Luann Live that I just did in Orlando. And this is 2023 we're talking about. And the topic of the event was health and wealth, a well-designed business within a well-designed life. And we had half the conversations were on business tactics and strategies, and the other half were on wellness strategies. And at one one of the panel discussions on um, wellness, Jew Charles, who was on the panel, asked the audience, how many of you in the audience have experienced anxiety, burnout, or some form of mental illness? And Christine, I don't know, out of a couple of hundred people, there weren't three hands that were up. It was crazy. Yeah. I mean- I expected a lot of hands, but that was overwhelming. Yeah. And so it's it's the point that you're making, right? Like who's talking about this? Because if we can't talk about this, just like if we're too embarrassed to talk about that, I don't understand my QuickBooks, how do you learn about your QuickBooks, right? Right. Like you have to first say, help with QuickBooks. And so it's that same thing here. If we don't make a safe place for us to talk about this, how do others know that they're not alone and that others are experiencing it and get the benefit of their strategies, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. I find that, um, especially in our industry, it's, it's very cutthroat and it's like, go, 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 you know, and I'm, I'm in luxury residential. So I do a lot of construction and, and it's like, you know, if it's not done today, it needs to be done in a minute. <laughs> like it's that, that's the kind of work expectation that we're supposed to rise to the occasion. And we're down to the, the micro inch, you know, if you're off by two inches in a house, you, it's off. And, it doesn't fit. It right. doesn't fit, you know? And so everything has to be perfect. And this sense of perfectionism, this thread that sort of weaves into this industry, I think has a lot, you know, it, it has a, a great impact in, I know a lot of us who struggle with anxiety, depression, mental health, just, you know, different aspects. I know that can be just hard on, in itself. Mm. Um, because of that level, we, we have to be a 10. And, and maybe we don't, but we feel like we do because the industry tells us that we do because that eighth of an inch is exactly what I'm talking about. That, that perfection down to that little, oh, it's not an eighth. It's a 16th. It's like, oh God, but that is the life that we're living. That, you know what? That's so true that what you're saying is because I think that we have possibly finally mostly evolved to the point where we recognize that we can't wake up and expect perfection, that it's unattainable, right? But that's an interesting concept because yes, though, when we're talking about building structures, (laughs) like, like that level of pressure for perfection 
it's not just an internal. So we, so we have as creatives and, and if we add the layer of a creative with any sort of mental anxiety or disorder to it, we have that internal um, voice talking about that perfection model. But then there is, to your point, this very real external expectation because guess what? It won't fit if it's not right. Yeah. Even in furnishings, you do, you, you need nail heads on something. Well, what number nail head? Oh, number 10. Well, what if you put number 11 (laughs) and then it comes back and, and that, that just makes it worse because then you get a sofa that's incorrect. Your client's freaking out. Then you're freaking out. And then you internalize. You have a horrible weekend. Like these are the cycles yeah. that we take. And so to to what you're saying, we do have to have that level of perfectionism. But the question is like, how do we take care of ourselves in that? How yes. how do we know that we need to to kind of cross our T's and dot our I's, but yet take steps back when we need to take steps back so that we can kind of come back to the table a little bit more fresh instead of just grinding day after day after day? That's a great question. It is a good question. (laughs) So do you have it mastered or do you have some strategies or you're just like, hell, that's what I came here to find out. (laughs) I'm like, who, anyone out there have the answer? (laughs) Send me a DM. Um, No, I have some, I have some things that I've worked through. Um, You know, I had my own mental health crisis, which I could share, but I, um, I've had to learn a lot of strategies, you know, whether it's setting boundaries with my clients or with myself or whether it's maybe taking a pause of like, you know what, I, I need to take a day. Like, I just need a day. I need to like go, you know, do something fun to kind of re-energize. Maybe it's just like, you know, taking a really long bath and, and putting the the fire on or something that feels good for me so that I could, you know, let out a good cry and then, okay, come back. So, and, and sometimes, you know, the, the biggest thing that I've learned is my thought life. I mean, what are my thoughts? Where are my thoughts headed? What, why am I, how do I stop obsessing about these negative thoughts on, you know, like, why did I do this? Or, oh my God, that nail head was wrong. Or, oh my God, the quarter inch, like, how do I move beyond that? I think the answer is that you have to do the work. And so it means something different for everyone, Mm. you know? And, and so I think I've, I've definitely done a lot of work. I definitely have things I can share, but, um, but it's work in progress. Yes. Oh, oh, you know what? Always, right. It's always a work in progress. And I think that's the key though. It's the working in progress as opposed to running away from it or not, you know, like pretending it's not happening. Like you said, when you get to the point where you just know you need a day, then better to take the day. So, What was your particular experience? You said that you, you know, you mentioned it and you were willing to, to share it. Yeah. So I, um, I developed an eating disorder. I mean, kind of long story short about me. I, I was born in Jersey, lived in Boston. I came to LA and I went to design school out here and then I developed an eating disorder in college, Mm -hmm. um, in design school. So like right straight from high school into design school and, I was also a competitive gymnast. So I had all these tendencies oh, that sort of oh, ma- yeah. made, <laughs> I, <you laughs> everyone does that. They're yeah, like, oh, really she yeah. was a gymnast. Well, you yeah. know what? It's brutal because you're yeah. sitting there in leotards from four years old <laughs> and literally yeah. seeing each other shape every which way. Yeah. And you're just way too young to be yeah. comparing yourself at that level to other people. It's just brutal. I'm like, and- get me started. Just get I, me started. <laughs> I know. And also- which is interesting, the level of perfectionism you have yes. to have as a gymnast yes. or as a ballerina or as a whatever or whatever, you know, Four in sports. Four inch balance beam that you're doing a backhand spring If on. your toe <laughs> is hanging off, game over. It's it. So, so yeah, I think that that same, I mentioned that because that's, you know, that kind of is still in my life, which is yes. funny. But um, so as a gymnast, I developed this eating disorder. I got into like health and fitness and, and, and wellness. Um, I say with like quotations. Um, <laughs> and I became anorexic. Um, mm. And so just edu- a little short education on that. I mean, I think there's a little kind of um, like a negative connotation of like, oh, she just doesn't eat, you know, so it's a very complicated disorder. It's actually an anxiety disorder where you are, um, you, 
you feel like you're out of control, so you need to control something. You know, there's a lot of like that in the psychological world of that. So it's not like, oh, she just thinks she's fat, so she's not eating. I just feel like we need to move beyond that sim- mm. simple minded train of thought. And so I developed this eating disorder. I got pretty, really, really very unhealthily thin and fragile. I wound up seeing a therapist and like kind of going into this sort of quasi recovery. And then I developed a binge eating disorder and I gained all the way back and that was really traumatic. And then I had an over exercise addiction and I had, it was kind of like this wave. And then, um, then I relapsed and then I basically was anorexic again. And it lasted, the last segment was about seven years where I just sort of like kept dwindling. I had a um, life-threatening situation. I almost died. I was, I collapsed. I had this whole hospitalized, the whole thing. And then I went into a recovery. And (laughs) and so, yeah, it was, uh, the recovery was worse than, than I had ever expected. Just, I mean, when you, any addiction, whether it's alcohol, drugs, I don't know, cigarettes, whatever, whatever it is, it's like you can't breathe without it. And so you have to find a new way of living. Like how I remember, I remember this even calling my mom and she, she came to help. But then when she left, I, I was like, I, I don't think I can drive alone. Like I was terrified of, of, it was like all of my anxiety was then exposed. Like I just got blown up and it was just all over in these pieces that I had to really come back together. So I had, you know, therapist, dietitian, the whole like team. And I wound up not going to a center, like a treatment center. And I wound up doing it on my own. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that was uh, also one of those traits I was talking about at the beginning, that driven trait yes. where you use your traits for either positive or, you know, in a positive way, or those traits can also be your, what are they called? Like assets and your downfalls. The, the, your, yeah, your downfalls. Your, yeah. It's like that. And so how do you use that same trait mm. to get you over to the other side versus letting it lead you into a, a backward spiral? Right. Tap into that drive and Tap that, into that drive. the betterment of yourself. As and also to- like, I'm not going to lose. I'm going to win this. So I'm going to put, <laughs> I'm going to, you best believe I'm going to come out on the other side. And so I, um, yeah, it was a nothing short of a nightmare for me. I was just traumatized the whole time. I, I mean, I was, my body was changing. I was, uh, I had, oh God, I, there, there's so much to that story. Um, but yeah, and so I had to learn how, why, why did I develop this? Why did it, why did I lead myself down this path of destruction? And why didn't I have the strength or know how to turn it around? And I think when we're in those situations, it almost takes control of you. Mm. And so getting my strength back, my mind back, myself back, it was an upward battle. And um, I'm proud to say that I'm sort of on the other side. I mean, I, 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 don't, I, I don't feel like I have any residual necessarily like life. You know, obviously I, I'm not anorexic anymore um, and I, I have – little bit of anxiety and things that I deal with. Um, well, you know, I have anxiety. And so it's just, ma- just managing that. I definitely have that, but nothing that, that really would, I just would never go back. I mean, I'm wow. a totally different person. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, and over how many years was this from college to how many years till you finally like, that's it. I, I can call myself reco- in recovery. Yeah. So that I went into recovery four and a half years ago. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and that was in like 2019, something like that, 2019. And so now we're 2023. And I feel like the first year I was just like, just, I don't even know how I worked. I mean, I just the seas were parted for me. Like I had this breathing room and I somehow got by of like, still like, I'm still managing a company. I still had employees. Like I still had projects and I'm here. I am. You mean going this was through- happening. Why you were, were, uh, this was as a, a, an adult, this wasn't like college in a year or two afterwards. This was like decades. Oh yeah. It was thing. a de- It was 14 years. So Whoa. it happened. It was 14 years and now I would be on year 18 and a half, but, um, yeah. Wow. So for 14 years. So I, I started my company. I, developed my brand. I worked a lot. I grew. I was, you know, I was expanding. I was doing all this. And then 
I went into my recovery, I was still doing all those things. So it's like, I mean, wow. I mean, even as I'm talking, I'm like, gosh, that's a lot. My poor, <laughs> you poor thing. <laughs> you poor thing. Go take that bath. That's right. Um, yeah. That's right. Christine, that's amazing. That's yeah, it was incredible. a lot. incredible. Yes. Yeah. So I feel like I had a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of learning in that period. And, and, and now I feel like I have something to say about it. Okay. I love it. I love that you're sharing it. You know what? Because you know, there's somebody listening that is running a company right now and whatever their particular challenge is, it's, they're like, whoa, this is, yeah. 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 And I had someone, I was on a panel at KBiz and I got to speak a little bit about this, not, not to this level, but somebody came up to me afterward who had an eating disorder. Um, and she's like, oh, I would love to follow up with you. And I was like, yeah. And then she never followed up. And I reached out a couple of times. And, and so like, obviously, wasn't I, hope, ready. I hope that she's listening to Luann, but yeah, yeah she wasn't ready. She wasn't and that's ready. also part, that's also part of it is like, you, you gotta, you gotta be ready yeah. or you have to want it so bad that you're willing to give up all the things that this addiction or a disorder brings you yes. to be able to, and, and yeah, you got to be ready. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that sounds very much probably what happened. It's like, she knew you were the real deal. She knew you yeah. were going to come to her with some, you know, tough, but loving questions and things. And she just was like, nope, not yet. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's like, it's everyone's own path and you can, take it at your own pace. I mean, I didn't really get to choose my path. It was like, you're either going to die or you're going to recover. And so I think that's what made it so hard for me. I didn't like wake up one morning and was like, okay, I'm going to change my life. <laughs> it was, it was more of like, okay, you changed. Ha- you have it's to, not going to be a life. <laughs> yeah. You have to. And I, um, yeah, I, I'm, but I did still choose, right? Yes, I could, yes. I could have, yes, I could have not. So I do remind it's always myself a choice. that it's always a choose a to give up is a choice to give up. I mean, giving yeah. up is a choice. And so you didn't give up. You chose to stand up. Yeah, is what exactly. You did. Yeah. So, so now four years out of it, how does it enter? So you alluded a, a while ago about, you know, having the signals for your own personal self when you need a self-care day or whatever, but how does it really impact? Like, do you, are there, are there things that happen that, you know, I'm going to use, I don't know if it's politically correct. These, I can't fit, keep all this stuff straight, but like, <laughs> like triggers you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, that's okay to say or not. I'll say, I'm sorry. You can say you anything know. with me. <laughs> But like, you know what I'm saying? Like something that like, you know, to me, it's a stomach punch, right? Yep. It's like, oh, that just put me right back into that spot. And so do those things happen to you at this point, Christina? Or are you like, nope, here's how I mitigate this. Like it's a thing every day that is part of my being. It's a distant part of my being, but I know the pressure that my job and my career and my business demands. And so these are the ways I put the safeguards around me. Like, Talk yeah. to me about that. Yeah, actually, you know, like triggers. I mean, it's funny. There, you get triggered in different ways. Like I, I know I was. This is sort of unwork related, but I went to get this like, um, this suit made, like a custom suit. I have these guy friends, and they're into making custom suits. I'm like, oh, I need a custom suit, a white suit <laughs> with like some satin. I'm like, I'll just go, and the guy was like measuring, you know, you have to like tailor fit. And he's like, I'm going to, um, I need to get to like the widest part of your whatever. Right. And so I was like, look, buddy, we're not going to be using those terms with Christine here, you know? And so like, there's just different <laughs> things that kind of wind up happening. I, I mentioned something he asked me to get on the scale. I said, no, I'm not getting on your scale. And so there's ways that I know how to protect myself. So it's like, I don't need to, this is ridiculous. Like there's, or, you know, maybe it's like, um, other things that are non-body related. I mean, a client might make me feel like I didn't do my best. And part Mm -hmm. of this, you know, whole, why we have addictions and eating disorders and and whatnot is like, there's this self worth that we're, we're after, like, I have to be the best. I have to be the perfect. I have to be the, and so when someone tells me that I'm not doing my best and I know that I'm doing my best, you bring me from a level two to a level 10. And I'm like, you will not do that to me. Right. And so then it gets in my head and I'm like, and then I, I, I ruminate on it. Like, did I not do my best? Like, this is what I do best. And so 
I think things like that trigger me more. And I have to realize like, no, we're beyond that. Like we're beyond the ruminating. We're beyond the mental obsessions. We're, we're beyond really caring if somebody thinks that you didn't do what you know you did. We got to let it go. And so I think that's a lot of the, of, of what I do in my company, because the other thing I wanted to mention, but before that is like, I'm riding everyone else's roller coaster. It's like, oh my God, you know, this, this happened today. Like, I can't believe it's not here today. And they're, you know, pissed and they're texting you and you're like texting back, you know, and, <laughs> and then like the next day they're like, okay, God, I love it. So beautiful. And you're just like, holy hell, I just <laughs> got thrown off the roller coaster and I'm on the ground just like a in, you know, shambles over here and you're just sitting over there comfy. And so I ride a lot of those waves or, you know, the tile showed up and it was the wrong tile and you're scrambling and you're like, girl, where is the tile? You know, and you're, you're calling your vendors and you're, and they're like, there's freaking out. Right. And then the contractor calls and he's like, oh, we found it. And you're just like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> so the roller coasters that we ride as designers yeah. is because you are not only dealing with yourself, but you're dealing with all of these personalities. And guess what? They all have their own little They, they little all come with issues. their own bag of tricks. Yes. yes. <laughs> they have their own issues. And maybe and maybe this tile just pushed them over yeah, the edge. That's right. Right? And so yes. you, you have this awareness of like, wow, it's not only myself that I have to take care of, but I also have to be aware that it's not personal. Right? Right. It could just be like, yes, they're paying two mortgages. They're, you know, the, their kids are in private school. Whatever their financial distress is, then be, we take that on. And we don't, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to be doing that. I just still do. I'm not doing it great. But it's like, I have to remind myself that your problem is not mine. I want to sympathize. I want to be compassionate. I want to be caring. I, I want to be that, you know, I'm very relational. So like, I want my clients to be, to feel safe and comfortable and and like, wow, Christine, you know, she, she really shows up for me, whatever. But I also don't need to ride on your roller coaster. Right, right. Yeah. And so <clears throat> let me ask you a question. What I'm gathering from this is, first of all, your, the stories are like dead on, right? Every one of us have been in those moments, okay, of the holy crap, everything's in. And then all of a sudden, yes. next day, they're all like, oh, this is like so great. <laughs> Thanks. And you're just like, I lost like 90 <laughs> hairs over this. I have like a complete gray head. Thank you so much, right? Yes. So, but what I'm hearing is, and when I think about it, for me, I relate to all the lessons that I've learned from my daughter, Christy Rocha, and her podcast, The Inner Edit, and Diana, who works for me here, my marketing coordinator. When I'm hearing the differences, and I want to say it out loud and have you ha say to me, yeah, no, maybe, is if I'm a person that doesn't suffer anxiety or I don't have a history of some sort of eating order addiction, whatever, like you described, those things affect me. I'm on that roller coaster. But when it's done, I'm sort of like, you know, F you for making me crazy for two days and I move on. Mm -hmm. But what I'm learning is, is, and I think this is what you're describing is now in recovery, you have to actively through that process, remind yourself that this is not a reflection of you, that their problem is not your problem, that their problem is your problem to solve, but not your problem to get into a rabbit hole on and bring, and you have to, you're, what I'm hearing is you're actively protecting your own psyche through this. Exactly. And is that the difference, Christine? Like I'm just feeling angry and I'm feeling the, the, the crisis of the situation, but when you're evolved and you do know yourself well enough to know that you have anxiety or fill in the blank, the the tactic now is to actively protect your own psyche through that roller coaster ride. Is is that accurate? dead on? Yeah, okay. dead on. I mean, that is exactly it because the whole act of recovery of anything or the whole act of overcoming you can overcome. Like there's. You can. I mean, I think that in our society, it's like you just, boom, you put a stamp on someone and then it's like, oh, my anxiety. It's like, no, it is exactly what you're saying. It's an active, yeah. it's an active thing where you, you are working maybe a little harder than somebody who, who doesn't have those, you know, but also I think it's sort of a blessing in disguise. Like, again, it goes back to those traits. Yes. I mean, you, yeah, 
you spend time ruminating and, and whatever, and you do have to combat those. But also, that's what makes your plan so, you know, detail-oriented. That's what makes your design just so spectacular in that way because you do spend time kind of, I'll use the word obsessing, but you do spend time obsessing <laughs> on, on the hardware color or, oh, does this really? That is what makes us unique and special in our industry. Yes. But that's also what we have to wind up working on in our personal life. I love that. I love that. Um, you know, I always say the the every one of us, if we picked out our best, best, best trait, hmm. it is also our, our Achilles heel, right? Yes. When, when we show up, it's sort of what you mentioned in the beginning of the show. When we show up as our best self in a particular trait, when we're at our worst self, it's usually that same trait turned on its head. <laughs> you know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Right? And so what you're just saying there is the same thing, is the thing that gives the um, elevation to your creativity and the elevation to the way you do your work with the attention to detail and needing to be to the eighth and the 16th of an inch is also the same thing that you have to be wary of. You have to be careful of not to, you know, it's knowing when and where, right? It's knowing when and where. And that is the particular challenge. What I'm hearing is the particular challenge when you also come with a, an experience and a history of the types of things that you've experienced, right? It's different for for you because you have to protect yourself through it is what I keep hearing, right? Yeah. And you almost like have to decide which, like, which hat you're going to wear. Like when I'm at work, um, you know, the, that's that saying about the hats, like, okay, I'm gonna put on my work hat, but maybe like defining what that actually means. Like, yes, when I put on my work hat, maybe I am more of a perfectionist. Maybe I am more attentive to detail. Maybe I need to do that. But when I'm at home, I'm gonna take that hat off and I'm going to be more, like open and I'm going to be more maybe relaxed and I'm going to like decide what you want that to be for yourself. But I, I like thinking of it that way because then I know when to turn it on and when to turn it off. I love that, Christine. I love that because it's not denying that that perfectionism and that obsessive sort of quality, that drive that you're describing, it's it's not looking, it's like, don't say that's not good. There's good in that. It serves oh, yeah. you. But mm-hmm. what you're saying is it doesn't serve you all day long. It doesn't mm-hmm. serve you at home when you're cleaning up the kitchen and five hours later, you're still cleaning the kitchen. All you <laughs> needed to do was wipe the damn counters Just out. wipe it up. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right? Exactly. Or, you know, your partner walks in and says something to you and you're just don't take it at face value and you like go all the way into, well, why did you say that? And what did you really mean? It's like, you know what? We have our casual hat on now. (laughs) We have Mm -hmm. our Christina's home and this is the house hat and things are easy breezy here. And we don't have to figure out all the details. That's interesting. And that's a mechanism that works for you. It is. And it's also like you're, you know, I had a a client the other day. um, It's a male. And he said, oh no, 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 Christine. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guy. I just compartmentalize. He's like, I'm really sorry to generalize. And I was like kind of laughing. And then I thought to myself, wow, I really wish I could do that. You know, <laughs> like where, where I could just sort of just switch gears. But in a way, I, I'm starting to realize that I can, you know, and at work, you know, I'm going to be this way. And it's not like multiple personalities. It's just no. really like taking those parts of your personality and and not controlling, but just channeling them in a way that serves you and that Mm. protects you. Because when I'm at home, am I like, oh, whatever? No, I'm not. But I'm also (laughs) also still perfect. (laughs) Yeah, the house is great. But then at work, if I was like that, I just wouldn't find any success. And so it's like, and also like, you know, maybe when I'm with my friends and I just kind of let loose a little bit and I'm like, I get to be fun and funny and, and all of that. But like, and I do a little bit of that at, at work. And so you yes. gotta, you get to weave them in, but when there's something that's really destructive, I think realizing what that trade is useful for and finding mm. purpose for it, I think can be more helpful than just being like, Oh, I'm perfectionist. I was like, no, no. What can we be a perfectionist in and what can we take out the perfectionism for? I love that. I love that. It's sound, you know, it's so funny because again, at Luann Live for the four days, <clears throat> my daughter, Christy, the theme that she kept bringing up is self-awareness. Mm-hmm. Like if you are tapping into yourself and aware of your thoughts and your patterns and your different things, it's the first step to getting through to the other side on a lot of the things that we face as challenges. And that seems to be what you're saying there too. It's like, okay, 
I'm a perfectionist, but where does it serve me? And where can I like just put it on a shelf or something? You know what I yeah, mean? Exactly. <clears throat> awareness is awareness is key. Yeah. And so when we think about, um, so you're talking about, you know, understanding the areas where you just are, you know, taking the different hats and saying, you know, I don't need this here or this isn't serving me here. But then you also mention, you know, do you need a day or something? And so um, I don't really imagine that you're talking about, well, you know, I'm just sort of having a so-so day. I think I'll go get my nails done. <laughs> I think what I'm, I'm hearing is talk to me about, you know, all the things that you do in order to protect yourself in those moments with clients and contractors and stuff. But then when it doesn't seem to be working, I almost got that impression that there's moments where, yep, all the conversation isn't working, all the, you know, the good head talk and all the wearing of the hats, but you know, Houston, we've got a problem. Yeah. And it's, so tell us about those moments, Christine, and how yeah. do you handle them? Okay. Well, gosh, I mean, sometimes it's more of in hindsight where I was like, oh, wow, that happened again. Um, you know, so I think the Houston, we have a problem is like, um, I would say just allowing myself to just go there. Like, yeah. all right, go, go, just go like, freak out. Just go freak out for a little bit. No, no, just whatever. You'll come back. I mean, the biggest lesson that I learned, um, is that, what is it? Emotions are fleeting. That's the term. That's the phrase. But it, whatever feeling I'm feeling is very temporary. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you just need to kind of just feel whatever you're feeling. So I think, you know, giving myself permission to, to maybe freak out a little, um, I watched the show, I forgot what it was called. And she was grieving over her mom's death and, and her dad walked in. It was a funny scene. And she's like, ah, she's crying. She's like shaking, crying. And then he's like looking at her like endearingly, like, oh my God. And then it's like, beep, this like timer goes off and she just pops, she just snaps out of it. And she's like, okay, she gets up and I'm looking at it like, that's what I need. I need a freak out timer. I need, I need a, a 20 minute, maybe 15, a 15 minute alarm set and just just, you know, just let, just like, I can't believe this is happening. You, know, you can let out, you can talk about it. You can talk to your friends about it, talk to your husband, whatever, your partner. And then it's like, okay, I'm done. I got to go. I got to, I got to be done. So I've tried that. I have not set the timer, but I have, um, I, I told my husband actually, and he will, he will help me in that way. He'll, he'll be like, okay, I'm going to give you 30 more minutes to complain about it. <laughs> and I'm like, at first I was like, don't control me like that. <laughs> and then I'm like, wow, okay, you're right. Like that is one of those things that like the emotion is here. I'm feeling it. I'm, I, I'm feeling down on myself. I'm feeling like I could have been better. I could have done this. I should have, could have, would have. And, and now I'm going to go onward and upward. Mm. Yeah. So I love it in there because in there is the strategy again, <clears throat> like, just like you said a moment ago, we're not going to ignore the perfectionist tendency. We're right. going to accept where it serves us and put it in a box where it doesn't. And it's like you're saying the same thing again, where, you know, in your case, you're in recovery. It's four years. It's a journey. Yeah. So <clears throat> you're living it every day. But even if you're just, um, not just, but if you are also a person that is experiencing anxiety and it's an ongoing thing, there's no end of that, right? And I hear what you're saying. It's like, let's not say it's not happening. Let's right. not say this emotion isn't... I'm not feeling it. Like, it's okay. Let's label it. Let's talk about it. Let's lean into it and feel it. But then it sounds like the other strategy there is, again, that awareness of, however, we're not going to go all the way and spiral all the way out. This is going to have an end limit on it, whether it's 10 minutes or one hour, or it's a day at the spa, like whatever yeah. you're doing, right? It's like recognize and almost sounds like you almost are through it to the point where you're, I'm almost, you know what I just heard in my head? Almost like parenting yourself. Yes. You're making agreements with yourself. You're like, look, girl, yeah, this is hard right now. I get it. And it's hard enough that we want to feel it all the way. We do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's like, like you say to your little kid, buddy, let, let, let's cry it out. We're good. <laughs> you know, but like, we're going to sit here and we're going to, like, I feel like that's what I do with my grandchildren. Like, yes. you know, there's just times when what they're crying about isn't what just happened. 
Right. And you're just like, oh, you're just starving because we've been on the beach for a billion <laughs> hours and nobody <laughs> fed you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? I, I think that's part of it is like kind of identifying too. Like the other thing I'll do is sometimes I'll just realize, I think I just need to cry. Like I don't cry a lot. Like I, I'm very like, you know, I, I've got one problem after another and I'm just tackling those babies all the time. And I'll, I'll realize like, you know what I need? I need to work all day without an interruption. Right. So maybe that's my solution. But then I'm like, I think I just need to cry. I will, I will draw myself a bath. I will put on a sad playlist. <laughs> I will think about, I will think about how, how stressed I am and how much I'm going through. And I'll think about how my, my client said to me, made me feel like, and I will just lay in the bath and I will cry and I will dry heave cry. And then like, <laughs> and then like 20 minutes later, I'm like, all right, that all felt right. great. I'm it. hot. Just- now I'm hot and irritated. <laughs> I'm going to get out. And I'm going to, I'm going to do, you know, good, like facial, you know, maybe like a little, like a mask and, and whatever I'm going to do. And I'm going to, and then I start feeling like a, my own, getting my own womanhood, whatever I'm doing. And then like the next day I'm like, wow, I really needed that. So it's like, I just think kind of identifying like, what is it? What, what do you need? Like you just said. Honey, what do you need? You need yeah. a hug. Yeah, you, you need, need a hug. Chicken nuggets. You need, you need to. <laughs> you need to go to a boxing ring and smash some things. <laughs> I have done that too. I went to the um, I went to the the rage room a, like before, and I'm like, I think I just need to smash some things and go to the rage room. <laughs> I was smashing the bookcase and I smashing the car, and I was like, perfect. That wow. settled that. <laughs> Finding all those tools. Oh my goodness. And you can't just have one. You got to have a whole box of them. (laughs) Because what worked yesterday is not going to work tomorrow. Oh my goodness. That's so good. I I mean, I I really, I really appreciate your being so honest and, you know, just love it. I guess my thing. It's like, let's have the real conversations for crying out loud. You know what I mean? Like I'm really super happy of the new color of the year, but whatever. Uh, Like your sofa came in, your sofa came in a little, like one inch small, like, oh, sorry, but I'm dealing with something over here. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. So it's funny. I don't often use this line, but it's appropriate for, I think, a conversation like this. My daughter often ends her podcast by saying, is there anything that you wish I would have asked you that I didn't regarding this topic or anything that's still on your heart or mind about this topic that you want to share before we close out? Yeah, I, there was one thing I, I wanted to say about just how the change kind of affected my work environment since mm. we're kind of on a designy, you know, design related topics. I mean, just uh, I mentioned boundaries and stuff, but I think just if I could say one, like almost like positive reinforcement of, of wanting to, to change is just how, how much impact it's made on my business and my company of, of making me feel more um, like not necessarily like relaxed, but like myself. And so how it translates in the, in the business is like, I could think clearer. I don't have all these kind of other things I have to get to or, or thinking about, you know, what I need to do. It's like, I'm more open in my business. I can see my clients as they are like, Oh wow. You know, that must've been a really hard day for them. I know it's not personal. I touched on that, but, but just kind of like blowing that up a little bit to just say, you know, we are in a tough industry. We are in that cutthroat I mentioned. And, but also how this brings compassion that you can have for your clients. And that, that has taken me very far in, Mm. in realizing that Mm. like, it isn't just about me and my feelings and how I'm feeling and how you're making me stress, but also like, you know, they're stressed too. And so let's all just sort of like care for each other a little bit better. Mm. And as we're dealing with our own mental health or emotional things, or maybe somebody had a death in the family or all of these things, like having a little bit more of a a general care for people is really something that I took from all of this. I love that. I love that, Christine. So in learning to care for yourself and to understand your needs and the things that serve you and the things that don't, you translate that to when you have these difficult times and moments with clients and you're like, you know what, maybe this really doesn't have anything to do with me and I need to give them some space for whatever they might be going through. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That's so awesome. 
That's Thank so you. awesome. Oh my goodness. You are a heck of a lady. And I really, really appreciate your conversation today and your openness and your sharing your heart and your experience with us. It was very helpful. Thank you, Christine. Yeah. Thank you for giving me the opportunity and just allowing me a space to, to be able to share. Let's all care for each other a little bit better. Those are powerful words from Christine especially hearing them in context of her story. Because her saying, let's all care for each other a little bit better, and being able to act on that accordingly is a, re- is a direct result of her caring for herself a little bit better. By having compassion for herself, she is laying the groundwork and giving herself the practice and the space to have compassion for others. Christine had a long, tough road to get to that realization, but that's what makes it so much more powerful. This is why we need to be having conversations like this. Someone else might say something similar, like choose compassion, but what does that even mean? A heartfelt talk like this is so much more impactful because we see what it took for her to get here. We understand the why and the how, and if we don't have those, then I don't know. It's hard to see the point, isn't it? Christine is right in one aspect. This can be a cutthroat industry, specifically because of the perfection that surrounds it in every shape and form. One sixteenth of an inch is our standard unit of measurement. I mean, think about that. Think about the world that we live in, that the things that we do, one sixteenth of an inch makes sense a big difference. Okay. And the other truth here is that it is a creative industry. Creatives are driven and passionate people. Creatives, unfortunately, have also been linked to being more prone to mental health struggles. I'm not saying this is true for each one of us who is creative, but I am saying your mental health is part of your health and something you need to take care of, especially in an industry that leans on precision in so many facets. Okay. So with these two truths in mind, for her own well-being, Christine had to figure out how to take care of herself within this, you know, what is the word paradigm, right? Within this world. She admits to not having it mastered, but I think she gave us some great strategies today. Let's pick it apart and get to the gist of what Christine is doing, because I have a feeling it will help many of us as well. First of all, she said, you have to make the choice to take care of yourself or not, right? It's simple. It's a choice. Whether you have serious problems or small problems, you have to make a decision to choose yourself. Next, we have to understand our triggers. For Christine, one of those triggers is getting on the scale, so she does not do that. Another one is someone, like a client, making her feel as if she didn't do her best. Not only does Christine realize these are triggers, but she has a process in place on how to deal with them when she notices them. She tells herself she is beyond obsessing about them. It's another decision. She tells herself that she has moved beyond obsessing about them. It's a choice. She takes it further to tell herself that it probably has nothing to do with her in the first place, right? That maybe the client has their own things going on. We all do. We all are humans coming to every interaction with all of the things that happened to us that day, that week, that year, our entire lives. They all show up in every interaction. And Christine has learned to have compassion for the other person. She says that when we have compassion for others, we are not riding on their roller coaster, right? Think about it, being in line for that ride at Disney. You know the ride is for you, so you just don't get on. You're in charge of what ride you get on, and you are in charge of whose problems you will take on or whose problems you will allow to trigger your things, right? She says, you have other things to obsess over. I love how Christine sees the beauty in all of this. Yes, your obsessions and passions have a place to come through in your designs. This is absolutely part of your creativity and you need it and you don't need it for someone else or something else. Save it for when you need it, right? Save that obsession for when it serves you. 
Jane Arricchio was on the show a while back, episode 899. And this is a good list, uh, episode to listen to if you struggle with the inner saboteur, as Jane calls it, that voice inside that indulges and goes down the rabbit hole of emotional reaction. Look, it's normal, but you want to kind of prevent that spiral, right? So because as Jane taught us, here's the thing, we also have an inner sage voice, the voice who empathizes, thinks and taps into the positive things for us. Sounds exactly like Christine is doing, doesn't it? Christine also says she likens it to wearing hats. We all wear a lot of hats in our business and our personal lives. So decide what hat you need to wear and when you need to wear it. Decide which is going to serve you in a particular situation and leave the other hats on the shelf, right? Now, I understand it's not always or ever, <laughs> it never is, right? As easy as it sounds, I get that. Christine does too. And that's where the self-care comes in. If you need a refresher on self-care and how it fits into being a business owner, please go back and listen to episode 881. It's a Power Talk Friday show with Katie McDonald, who was also recently with us at Luann Live. In that episode, Katie explains how self-care is the key to building a thriving, well-designed business, right? You have to take care of yourself. Understand what you need and when you need it. That is what self-awareness is. This is a key learning point from my daughter on her podcast, The Inner Edit. She touches on being self-aware so often over there because being self-aware and taking care of our mental health is absolutely foundational to making the steps through to take care of the rest of the, ourselves. Okay, so she's consistently talking about tapping into your self-awareness. And I think that's also exactly what Christine was saying today. Okay, now, funny thing, you know, on reflection, this conversation, even though Christine and I didn't touch on building the dream team, which is what we thought we were going to talk about, I think you can see how you get there with all of this in mind. If you take the time to figure out the stuff about yourself, the things that you need for yourself, the support you, you need from others, this is how you start to put the people around who around you <laughs> um, that fulfill you and that build your team out and then make your world work, both from a personal and professional level. So we didn't go a direct line, but I think we got there. Thank you so much, Christine, for being open and honest and vulnerable. This can sometimes be scary, but it's also what brings us success. You are fantastic, and I wish you all the best in the new year and beyond, Christine. Now, I want you to start thinking about that, especially as we head into the new year. Vulnerability is not a weakness. It takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable. It takes trust to be vulnerable. But being vulnerable can lead to so many rewards and opportunities for growth, both inside and outside. 2024 is practically at our doorstep, and I hope you're putting some thought into how you can grow and reach your goals in the next year, both in your business and in your personal life, okay? Maybe you've realized that your business foundations could use some reinforcement, but you're not sure what the next step is. Like Christine said, we can't do it all ourselves. We need to surround ourselves with others that support us, others that are working in their superpowers. And that's exactly what I have for you at Lou University. These instructors, these colleagues of yours are working in their superpowers and sharing their expertise with you so you don't have to spend all year working in trial and error and trying to recreate the wheel because your time is valuable, right? I'm even teaching a class this year. On January 10th, we are going to be doing a, a well-designed business workshop together, okay? This is a four-hour intensive, and it is based on my first book, okay? So this is four hours that can possibly change the trajectory of your business with a little clarity and a little planning on who you are, what you want to do, and where you want to go, and how you want to create it. 
All right. Don't miss out on this class. It's only being offered once a year. This is your opportunity to take it. And if you are listening in real time, exactly today, December 19th, 2023, is the last day for early bird pricing. You can go to luanuniversity.com to learn more. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I certainly enjoyed this conversation. I think it's awesome whenever we can get together and really talk about all the things that create a well-designed business. Decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day. Mm-hmm.